All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. We have two guys on here that look extremely jacked right now. Other two are looking, looking a little skinny. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Let's go. Welcome. Q, welcome to the show. How y'all doing? Let's go. All right, Q, welcome to the show, Jesus. man. What's going on, bro? I feel bad for Berkeley. Nothing much. Because Berkeley, Berkeley has to sit by this, by this fucking I, 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 no, you're looking, massive you're looking individual. Looking juicy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. All right, guys, make sure to subscribe to the notification bell. Follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. <laughs> Q, man, what's been going on? What's been on your mind? There's been too much going on. I don't even know where to begin. You let yeah. me know. You know, I got too much <laughs> shit going on. You know, working out, making pasta. How often are you working out? Yeah. Every other day. You know, if I'm making a cooking video, I've worked out that day. Really? Yeah, you yeah. got to get jacked for the cooking yeah, video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you like lift pasta barrels? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I hold the record for the most lifted pasta at one time. Like yeah. 400 pound bench, but it's pasta. I can't bench 400 without pasta, but yeah, pasta. Tell me, do you, do you get hit up, hit up a lot by, uh, by moms? No, I have to go to the moms. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 No, I know. I'm completely, no, a lot of moms actually. Yeah. No, I got to imagine you no, get a lot of moms. moms. No, it's funny. I like it. What's yeah. your like mom to like person your age ratio on hit up? Uh, I had, I've personally been with a 38 year old woman, 38 year old woman. Yeah. How old were you when you were with 38 year old woman? 19. You're 19. Now was that sick or was that kind of too hyped up? Like what was the situation there? You know, in the end of the day, it's a human, you know, you're, you're, you're having sex with another human too. So <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter how old they are. It, yeah. But it's a human that has way more experience and yeah. like, was it, was it better though? No. You know, it was no, it was nothing. Better. It was fun. Yeah. Had it was a good experience. Had she had a kid? She had two. Damn. Dos okay. niños. Dos niños. Damn. She. She. <laughs> <laughs> and how did that like happen? How do you like even get in contact with like a 38 year old when you're 19? This was actually in Ecuador. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so what's the story there? Uh, it's like 90 day fiance. <laughs> <laughs> Visa card. What is that? Green card marriage? Yeah. yeah. No. So my, so my, oh my, God. my dad's wife, not my mom, my dad's wife lives on she's not she's from ecuador and my dad oh, yeah. got a house in ecuador to you know you know have she's got family there you know, yeah he goes he said i'm gonna get a house there i guess whatever <laughs> but uh, i was there visiting for the first time and um i kind of was like away from my dad he like let me go to the beach with like it was like his wife's brother and his friends it was the weirdest combo it was like i'm 19 yeah i'm with uh i think like a fucking 40 year old and a 20 four year old girl and then like a 38 year old woman and nice. like the age range was so <laughs> fucked. You're walking down the beach or something? What it was it? at the beach and um, okay so it was the first night she came to dinner and, and she looked at me and I think the first she just was like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were, you, were you big at the time? Yeah I've, I, I just I guess I was this was like when I first moved out here I started getting small because I stopped working out. I was like okay you're like, bigger back then. Okay. Yeah yeah I was like around the same that's definitely the biggest I've ever been in my life. But. Yeah. I get, she just, she immediately, I asked the guy, I was like, does she actually, like, she likes me? He's like, she's 38? Like, she's like, yeah. 19? That's a flex, bro. And, and, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, go for it, bro. <laughs> he's like, just get it. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was so fucking confused. How experienced so confused. were you with, uh, ha had you been with older, older women at that time? Absolutely. Zero. Zero? Yeah, from Damn. like 20 years old. I don't know, like 20 year old, maybe it was my max. It was like, I've only been a year or two above me. And then all of a sudden it went from that to 38. Mm. But I was mm. fine. You know? It's such yeah. a different, it's 38 is such a different, that's a whole different generation. Different it's game. almost two different generations. And the best, the best part of it was the fact that I was speaking Spanish. You're speaking the whole Spanish. entire time. Wow. But when I get drunk, I can speak way more Spanish. <laughs> oh yeah. You unlock the whole new level, yeah. right? That's no, all it is. God, yeah, God. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. I, was it like the Italian accent a little bit that she was into too? Like a mix of Italian as well? I don't, I don't know. It's just, okay, so it's like you're, <laughs> you're in a third world country and, and they don't see Americans every day. They're just, you know, they're used to the local people. True. And then all of a sudden somebody from another country comes in, they automatically look at you as more yeah, they It's like you. the new girl in school. You look at the new girl in school, yeah. they look way harder than they really are. It does. So yeah, I guess it was so the fast. same thing with, with that. You know, they get so surprised. And I guess she did not give a flying fuck that I was 19 years old. Jeez. Cause it's like fucking American, right? It's a yeah, whole different. It's a whole different experience. Imagine it's a story. Like a foreign, she's it's a foreign a, girl at a party. She's speaking in an accent. And yeah. You're like, holy fuck. Or it's it, like a white dude goes to Japan. Like everyone's just like yeah, praising yeah. them. It's like, different in like in those areas. Not then, really, bro. No, it is, dude. When like Andre Drummond went to fucking Japan, everyone was like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. Like the okay, he's a little seven, different. Seven stuff. foot dude. But he's also yeah. seven feet. Okay, but yeah. Yeah, that, that's funny. That's, that's it's it's like that though. Yeah. Yeah. So so walk us through your accent. Because your accent is on TikTok. A bunch of people think that that's how you actually talk. Yeah. Right? I mean, boy, okay. So if I'm talking like this, whatever. But then all of a sudden, 
If I'm talking a little louder, yeah. yeah, that's how it comes out. It's like just with the with the energy, you know, the energy you get, you just it kind of builds up. So I'll go live and like I'm talking like this, like talking normal, and you know, some girls, people in the comments will be like, "Where's your accent?" I'm like, "I'm my accent's right here." And then I'm like, "Oh, what this accent? Pasta?" <laughs> like if you scream, yeah. it sounds a lot louder. Well, yeah, because I mean? you can hear, especially in the headphones, you can literally hear yeah. the accent all the time. Yeah, no, exactly. It's and the emphasis. The best, the best part about the accent is the fact that it's complete cap and it's not my accent at all. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have a fucking accent. I have a dead accent. So uh, <laughs> so funny. I don't know. You guys got fucking fooled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's not. He's been living on April Fool's Day this yeah, whole April life. April 2nd, bitch. <laughs> yeah, no, no accent at all, um, I think. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, literally, the, like, I know people from high school who would, like, talk in accents. And, like, Brett, you aren't from that place. Or, like, we know people that are, like, from places that their accent fades in and out. And it's like, yo, what the fuck? But it's, like, one word. Like, yeah. the one, yeah, that yeah, one yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, you say, like, and or something. And they're, like, and. And they're, like. Yeah, like, yeah right. it's different. Yeah. It's it's funny. It's like I think my it was my first cooking video that blew up. It was my first cooking video at all. I was just like home alone, and um, I wanted to make myself lunch or something. And then I was like, I'm gonna make pasta and just be a complete douche, like New Yorker guy. And yeah. like it was called if the Jersey Shore had a cooking show, <laughs> and that was like just the concept of it. And it was me screaming. Are you going to use this pasta or this? Do you use this? You're a bitch. <laughs> and like, it, I guess it just works so well that I was like, why would I make another cooking video without the accents? So yeah. I, I think the second video got like 30 mil. Jeez. It was like when I was in Ecuador, I looked at my TikToks and I was like, I was like, I need to go home and repeat the shit that works. Like, yeah. For all you creators, like if something works, do it again because mm. it's going to work again if you execute it like decently. So I looked back and said, let me do what works. I went back. The second video got 30 mil and then it's just Jeez. went, Yow! and then I just like, from there, it made it very unmotivating for me to make anything but a cooking video. And then that's why I kept the accent, mm. kept the style. Kept doing it. It kept working. Kept working. Kept working. You were doing really different stuff before. Like you released music before. Yeah. So literally, my whole intention of getting on TikTok was to promote my music, and it was like, I had like, it was like 100k every month, like another 100k, another 100k, like sometimes better. And then I yeah. just got so lost in the sauce that I just stopped <laughs> sauce. my music. Like I'd make a song, like I'd just make a song that night, put it on SoundCloud, and just like put a swipe up, and like that was yeah. it. Yeah. But then it kind of faded away. But now I'm gonna, you know, obviously take advantage of the following that I have now come back and mm -hmm. I made a song called like pasta in a Lamborghini. I like ran to the Lambo and just <laughs> made a music video, like eating pasta in the Lambo and, and just like being fucked. And, uh, and that's, you know, I'm just waiting for the comeback. Yeah. Music, but Th there's yeah. a thing though, right? Like when like certain creators on TikTok have a certain character or there's a certain way that's huge. And it, it starts, it dies out over time. Mm -hmm. That happens quick, right? That happened with different yeah, creators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willy Wonka, yep. like we haven't seen him in a minute, yeah. but <laughs> it's different though. You're different though, right? Like how Dude, what the happened to that man? He's gone. Wrong? Okay. You, you can gotta, only see, or like think about watching a movie. You can literally only watch a movie so many times before you can't fucking watch the movie. Bro, anymore. I'm the type of guy that watches it once. Great. I can watch it again. And like, Two months, yeah. if it's yeah. that good, perfect. Never yeah. again. Right. I know, but there, I know people. People can keep watching shit, but it's less people it's, are gonna keep. There's watching. A, there becomes a time to where it's like I really can't watch this again. Except maybe Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Christmas Vacation, <laughs> the only movie. Step Brothers, Step, Step Brothers, Step Brothers. Step Brothers, you can watch Step, a lot. No, but ironically, Step Brothers. I came back for like my fourth or fifth watch. In the past few years, I couldn't do it. And you're just on your phone. You're just on your I phone. I couldn't do it. I think but I, you're, you're, I, I, I just love it, bro. Will head. Ferrell, dude, he's, I mean, he's, he's obviously a, genius, a great movie, yeah. but it was just like, I think I got like halfway in and I was like, I know every fucking word coming out of this guy's <laughs> mouth. So yeah. that's I think it's and then I was just like, ah, you know, yeah. I, couldn't, I can't do it. But yeah, um, so I, yeah I, I get what you're saying, you know, of how that yeah. doesn't apply to my brand. Hmm. It's like for, for me, uh, people get sick of it and I get it. Like, I understand, like, if you open up your phone, you see me, oh, I'm making pasta and I say bitch a hundred times. It's like the same shit every single time. Yeah. But the second it hits the For You page, I'm gaining the traction as if I just started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because so many people don't, you know, it's like Charlie has 110 million. I have six. It's mm -hmm. like you, there's that many more people that you can get to. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what keeps I, I try to spice it up. You know, I don't say bitch 100 times in every video. Have you tried uh, doing your pasta videos, but in like uh, while speaking Spanish? Yo, so, you know, Malu? Yeah. Malu, yeah. Malu. So I met her at like Bryce Hall's house mm -hmm. and I was just kind of like, I think her manager was like, yo, bro, like your videos are sick. Like, like, 
make a video with Malu. So like that'd be like the example where I would make a video in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody get with those big fans, Spanish, Spanish fans. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit, bro! Like, the second I'll put a I'll put a story. Oh in my god, speak Spanish. Yeah, and then it's like hablas español. I know yeah. they go crazy. Like, yeah. See, dude. Okay, it's fucked. But you know, like Tony Lopez does some fuck shit, yeah. but he is still around purely because there's so many Spanish fans that don't bro, understand what's going on, but love watching. <laughs> That's what we even, Why is this fly fucking flying around? Yeah, fuck that fly. I know. Fuck that fly. Flies from sixty third. I thought you said fuck that guy. No, 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 no. We've had some call out mafia in uh, Tony Lopez. In Tony Lopez. In Tony Lopez history. You you cannot. Yeah. But But that's what it is. It's the Spanish fan base keeps them going because they're so insane. They don't. They don't. They don't speak English. Half of his fans don't speak English, so they don't know. Fans that don't speak English. Like I swear to God, they don't know what I'm saying, but they just see the food. Yeah. And then they're like. And it's in Italian, like what the fuck are you doing? Sometimes <laughs> be, they don't know they don't know what I'm saying, but they, they, they know it. that I'm doing and something the, wrong. And the age of consent in those in most of those countries is like between like twelve and fourteen. So oh, change a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's so. Fun. It's not fucked. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It's, it's, it's not. They think it's age of consent is puberty. It's a lot of other countries. Yeah, you know, yeah. like Tony Lopez, just, he didn't he didn't figure that out. Um, He's a little Americanized. Just a little yeah. Bit. yeah, no, yeah, no, he didn't he didn't quite figure <laughs> figure out far enough. But yeah, no, it's like it's one of those things. Like it's like most people know it. He didn't. Yeah. 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 You live and you learn. Yeah. How often are you donating sperm? What the fuck? Damn. Um, well, <laughs> I really, I really, really wanted to. That was like a thing that I thought about. I was like, I believe that I have really strong sperm. What makes your sperm stronger than ours? Oh, uh, the health. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah. I think like eating really healthy, you know, if got me there, if a girl pops up and goes like, mm, then you're like, you're healthy. Oh, then you know. Then yeah. You know. Ooh. But if they're like, like they, they look like they just swallowed like right, battery right. acid, vinegar then, stroke face. Right, yeah, right. So yeah, the whole donating <laughs> yeah. sperm thing. I'm a very, very spontaneous, momentary guy. I just kind of say shit yeah. and then make it very, very loud when I do. But no, yeah, no donating sperm yet. No, but there's money in that. Yeah, yeah for sure. sure. What sure. was that one movie with Vince Vaughn? The one oh, where he had like right. hundreds of kids because oh, of like yeah, a mix-up. Oh, yeah, 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 And he goes and sees them all? Yeah, after yeah, after them all. everyone in like seventh grade watched that movie, everyone's like, fuck it. I'm donating Don't, sperm. Yeah, Because yeah. I'm pretty sure like seventh grader sperm is like really strong. Oh, it has to be the best, dude. Yeah. Your nuts are so fucking fresh. Ah, it's yeah, literally yeah. like fucking starting up a car the I'm first a, time. I'm, you like yeah. I haven't seen that like darker, like whiter mm. colors since since that. Since yeah, seventh right? grade. Because, it, yeah. because the ratio of... And the first time you like ever jerked off like seventh, oh, eighth grade. Bro, you I would love hit looking the, you at hit the nut on the table. Yeah, yeah but you would hit the nut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you literally hit the ceiling like the first time. It's like it's like straight. What is the first time in like 12 years? You know, like the rocket, like the water rocket rockets you would make in like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. like that like they like teach you that <laughs> it's literally like elon musk calls you and he's like yo we're gonna need we're gonna need to know like your propellant tactics because we need to get to mars yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah the, the story behind the nut we went to fairfax and we literally just bought that as like a, a bit and it's our it's our cum nut nice. our, you our, guys keep it in there yeah, yeah. i mean we well we, we have guests to. Put it in there after though. That's nice. just, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So after the podcast, you got you got to rip one. I bet you after a couple of years, it'll turn gold. Oh, yeah. is that how nut works? Or it'll crystallize into diamonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah carbon. Yeah. There's carbon in nut. You know, oh, and sure. I think there's carbon in everything, right? Yeah. yeah. So there has yeah. to be. And this so, is verified nut, so it's a different. I kind guess of right. Nut. You, okay. can, you can turn anything into a diamond, so you might as well turn all that nut into a diamond. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And put it on, put diamond on a ring. Nut, <laughs> put on a ring. So that, bro, that's how you know your bitch ain't trifling. <laughs> or put she wears a <laughs> diamond nut or Uzi <laughs> diamond. <laughs> Uzi, <laughs> Uzi diamond <laughs> nut. That's that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Someone should do that. See this corner? That's Tony. That's that's uh, Imagine you got a. Imagine you got like a ten ten top ten bottom nut grill. Oh god. Oh, that would taste. No, it's diamond now. Yeah, I'm I mean, nut. I mean, just nut. <laughs> well, we'll have that for you, Kyle, but we'll, we'll just yeah. take the diamond on the ring. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I guess I'll take a nut grill. Yeah. <laughs> so you're from North Carolina. So I think a lot of people would assume, first assume you're from Jersey. Jersey. Right? Everyone says Jersey. So what's the story? Like, what's it, your hometown like? Your dad owns restaurants? What's yeah. So, of course, like, the, the irony of it all was the fact that my dad has Italian restaurants. My dad has been successful in, you know, it's the same. We, we have like a similar situation, except the mine's obviously in a way more privileged situation because he's already established, has a, has a, there. has a house. Yeah. So like he moved to, from Italy to like Connecticut, I think in like early nineties or something like that, like met my mom, whatever, 95 opened up his first restaurant. And, um, from there, just like the success built and built and built. It's pretty cool because there'll be like a guy that's like now the CFO of fucking Chase Bank or like CEO or yeah. something. And he's like, I was making 20 grand a year eating at your dad's restaurant. And now I own the company 20 years later and I'm still eating here. So it's like my dad has his legacy yeah. in Charlotte and like, like everybody in the restaurant awesome. industry knows who he is. And 
going back to like how I didn't do cooking videos before, um, I had like a million followers, 600 videos doing random shit, skits, like motivational stuff. There was no limit. I never yeah. limited myself. And that's another thing I like always tell people is like, don't limit yourself. The only reason why I'm limiting myself to cooking videos is because I can wake up every single day, have good energy, make the video that's going to perform, but not everybody can do that. You gotta yeah. get to that point. You're cool if it like no one gives a shit anymore and you have to make some different content. You know that you can do that. Not at all. Exactly. Yeah. I could I could make a back I could make a new TikTok right now and I think I could get a mill in like a month if yeah. I were to actually just make a bunch of videos. But basically it was just ironic. Like the fact that my life came back to me making pasta, I never did, but my dad had to start from nothing and make it all on his own. Like I never asked my parents permission to do anything that I did. Like I was doing everything and making it comfortable for them. That's another thing that people fuck up in life is like, is presenting shit to their parents. You want to move out to LA? You want to do all this shit? Like I didn't want to do it. I did it because my shit was working. It's like, yeah. if you're making the money, you can do it. If you're not, then your parents are going to think you're a lunatic. So it's like, yeah. I didn't listen to anybody. My dad didn't listen to anybody. My dad moved to, uh, America by himself, like illegally, like he just yeah. did whatever the fuck he could to get away from his home situation. I did the same thing in Charlotte, built my establishment, had the confidence, moved away. He moved away. So we have like the same situation, except in a very, mine's a very yeah. modernized a, version where yeah, it's yeah, like, TikTok, it's Instagram, the, yeah. it's just a leap of faith. Like if, exactly. you, if you want to take the leap, then yeah, he's doing yeah. what he loves yeah. and I'm doing what I love. I don't love like making pasta. It's fun now because I can do it, but it's like, I love being able to like create work out make music make videos do mm. all this shit and do it as a career yeah and have potential to make millions and millions and millions in different parts of this entertainment so it's like cool having a similar story and i think it's ironic yeah. and like destiny to come back and be doing what my dad does even though it wasn't my intention for sure like my dad worked his ass off he was a lawyer for years you know and i felt like in some way i'm i'm doing that like straight starting from scratch we're doing something bigger but it's still hard. Maybe I won't. We won't feel this way years on. And tell me if you feel this way too. But like you feel like it's not the same though. We're bl we're blowing up on TikTok and it takes mm. grind. Right. But it's not like starting a business in some small town. Even though like maybe we'll no. feel more like that. Yeah. The resources. You yeah. Know? yeah. It's a different generation resource wise. You can't really just pull shit out of your ass twenty years ago. But you can now. Yeah. You know, you come out, you meet people, and you play the game right. You're gonna go. You're gonna go off. But sometimes people do shit perfectly. Mm -hmm. Trying to start a business thirty years ago. Or even today, you yeah. know, starting a business, you know, you got to know what you're doing and you can do well, but it's easier to do it you know, yeah. if you know what you're doing nowadays. That's true. But, yeah. okay. Like the people that took advantage of TikTok in 2020 in the summer, like they're out here like doing 100%. this shit. Yeah. Because like, dude, That's us, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, people that are coming on our show and like we're like doing the show, but like everyone, like you just got to like take advantage of what's in front of you, man. I don't oh, know. God. Like TikTok is oh, fucking mm -hmm. literally blew us up. But it's when crazy. I moved, I moved out here. So th for me, it's like there's never been a person that I've met that I have that they haven't like come back to me with something. So like, oh, you meet some. I met somebody yeah. when I first moved out here last year, and I don't remember anything about. They got my number. We talked. Yeah. And then I'm like, you know, in that year that I've been here, my shit's grown, and so has their business. So they come to me like, now I got yeah. you. Now I've got the money for you to do this because their st shit's grown. It's like you meet enough people. People got their own shit going for them while you got your shit going. And then you come back together a year later and you're like, let's yeah. work together. Yeah, it's never but like, like a we dry, work together. Yeah, it's never like a dry conversation when you come back and like right. meet someone. But that's the most important part of like of life and, and uh, networking is the fact that like you gotta meet somebody and you gotta make sure that like they will think of you when it comes to the time. Like they yeah. that will come back. Yeah. You you go to a party and you think like I'm just here to get drunk and I'm just here to like take a girl home, but you don't think about anything business wise. Like you're in LA, you're there's people doing shit. You know what I mean? You gotta meet everybody, you gotta keep the relationship with everybody. Yeah. And I'm not saying it in like a force yourself. It's like just you know keep it natural become friends with everybody yeah. well like even so like you can't you pull up to our house like two in the morning one time like with like like <laughs> with like dude like we know and I was like yo that's fucking that's QCP and then and it, like we talk you know we talk we figure it out and then like you, you know you're here four months later right like it's, it, no, it, I oh, remember yeah. like seeing seeing you guys like a little bit on TikTok and seeing you on YouTube and not thinking of it mm -hmm. and then thinking back to the night that I came over and we're, the, we're going to the sink house I'm like what the fuck is the sink house <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like there's the this house the that house I'm like the, the sink house but then I was like, podcast, like that's cool. And then, obviously, the, the time, yeah, you guys grew and I grew and we meet. You know, we wanted to do a podcast then, yeah. and it's the same. It would have been the same then. You know All what I right. mean? It's like we would have had the same story, but it's like both established even more yeah. to this day. And then you you link up. The funniest thing is the is the the establishment of the sink house because we've never put that anywhere. Yeah. Like it is right. the only place where the sink house is actually written in writing is our group chat. And it's yeah. the sink house chat. <laughs> that's it. Right. And that's the only place it's ever been put. 
And what? like people that will come over, people in the comments, people and stuff like this will say like, oh, the sink house, the sink house. And we're like, what even is it? We yeah, don't right, know. Right. Yeah. Like, y'all this, don't even know what the sink house is. It's this entity that has never been created that has, somehow has a name. Bro, and that's my fucking brand for Betch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I made a video. So it was super ironic. Like, I was, was living with a roommate. He ends up leaving. And then I ended up learning that I needed my personal space to be able to succeed and to be yeah. able to be on my own schedule and get shit done and be happy. And that first week or something that he was gone, I had like a bunch of videos pop off. I gained like almost a million followers in like a week. And then my brand like got blown up again on accident by the, the betch. I accidentally, I accidentally said betch like 120 times in a video. And the top comment was like CEO of betch. And the video got like 15 <laughs> mil views or something Jeez. or like 20. And that sparked my brand and my career like boomed back up. You know, I was like, it was like a de depressions always lead into a boom of creativity and like, shit can even happen on accident like that. You're like, you don't even yeah, think yeah. about this, about sync being such a name. And now like looking at it, it's like, it sounds so much more crisp. It sounds yeah. like, yeah, sync house. It just like comes together a lot better. And that's what happened to me. I accidentally created a brand that's making me a lot of money, like personally and has potential to become its own business. Yeah. Like all I think, have you guys seen uh, breaking bad? Yeah. yeah. All I think of for bitch is just bitch, bitch, yeah. bitch. And, Everyone like that's a pretty that, that's a, that might be the best guy. I've heard. Yeah, yeah you can do a good Jesse. I mean, I've, oh, it's a pretty it good a Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, yeah. No, basically, it's just it's just ironic that you know I my whole brand came to be on accident. It was just a, it was an accident. Yeah. But I've made seven hundred videos to get there. People need True. to keep on fucking pushing. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just settle because you got one thing to blow up and you try another thing and it doesn't work. TikTok's hard, but keep on making videos. Yeah. And you take that shit and you double down on it, right? Most 100%. people see that and they don't know what to do with it. Right. Right. You gotta take advantage of you only get a couple of those those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Crazy. Fuck so awesome. what is that bigger vision like with the business? Is it opening up what? Pasta? Is it sauce or is it music like what? Yeah, I mean this like a is, restaurant? That'd be sick. Right oh. now, right now it's really like about like sticking with it until I can just have the power to defeat the stigma because I'm not a chef and I'm not a comedian. That's never been my intention at all. I've, I've never been like the funny guy. I've kind of, I feel like I've always just been like the person who understands people so they can make a joke. Yeah. yeah. And like I'm working to get like at least big enough with what I'm doing to be able to branch, you know, I've like, I am signed with next for modeling in New York and LA. So that's something that's like, starting to grow as if I just started on TikTok. Yeah. You know, it's going to take two years to get my modeling going. Yeah. And then the music comes along with having a following on top of the fact that the music has to be good. So it's like, I know my music, I can, I, writing songs is like riding a bike. You can just come back to it whenever I haven't written a song in two months. I don't fucking care. Is it really? Care. Like it's just 100%. natural? Okay. Because like you're building up a talent, like it's just learning like cadence and you know, when, when people freestyle over a beat, yeah, yeah. that's all you have to do is get good at like freestyling and like, copying a, a flow in your head and making it your own and then just putting words to it. It's like learning how to, it's just syllables. You know what I mean? So it's like you practice something, you get good at it. So I know I'll always come back to music modeling and then fitness is becoming like I'm right now. My main focus is just the cooking and the fitness, but this is all to grow until you have the power to be able to blow up. Like yeah. I'll be doing shows. Like, what does that look like then? Like you have what, like a million on YouTube or YouTube, what? YouTube is obviously like the powerhouse. Like I'm trying to grow my YouTube and I was doing content that was basically just like behind the scenes of collabs yeah. and um, different stuff, just vlog style, but it's hard to really start from scratch on yeah, YouTube. And 100%. even though I have such a big following, it's, you don't just get, I'm not going to just get 2 million views on a YouTube video, even though I get a couple million on a cooking video. It's fun. Only a certain amount of people are able to do that. Like you put Dixie's right. face on a YouTube channel. 100%. That yeah, will that, get, yeah. but it's, a, it's, whole, so it's rare. a whole different game. It's like, they're less branded and more of them. It's yeah. like their brand is really them instead of like something in specific, you know, it's something like, they provide. Make, right. So, I mean, pretty much the end goal is it's like to go back to my true passions. You know, I want, I want to work out, perform music and, and do this. But for now I'm going to, keep milking cooking, not in like a weird way. It's like, I love doing it. People love it, but people, I don't hide the fact that it's not like my thing, yeah. but like right now it is. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep grinding. So are you solely good at cooking just because your dad's such a good cook? And like, I and guess like that like helped know? me in a way. Like I just have seen it growing up. My mom knows how to cook like crazy. And my dad's like a pasta guy because he has had restaurants since before I was born and has been like the best in the city. And it's like, you know, like Drake's eating at our restaurants, really? like, like tons of people, like fucking take care. Drake was at our, like early, but people, you, you name take it, huge. That's fucking, cause my dad's epic. got a restaurant that's right insane. next to the spectrum center where the Hornets play. So it's like oh, nice. super okay. drawing, literally two blocks yeah. from the arena. 
So that's it's where like the Italian restaurant. Like, dude, oh, there's because like, you always wonder what families own those those restaurants, right? right? Like, it's, it's, it's super. There's nice There's always like, too. oh, it's yeah. super good Italian. Bro, he's got food. like some like chandelier from. Uh, there was this Michael Jackson video where Michael Jackson was going through this like uh, furniture store, and he's like, I want that. I want that. Oh yeah, yeah. I want that. And it's like all these fucking three hundred thousand dollar pieces. It's right? so, like got like a, my dad's got like this stupid crazy chand. It's a super nice place, that's and it. like as oh has had the same four waiters working there since the beginning since two thousand. So it's like you build something that he he's personally there. He, the reason why he doesn't want to become a Gordon Ramsay and expand his craft like worldwide is because like he can't go everywhere. Like Gordon Ramsay can't go to all of his restaurants. He got restaurants all over the world. Yeah. But you know that that's it's like just a different craft, I guess. Yeah. But um, it's wow. easy to I, it just picked up on it quickly just from seeing that. You know yeah. I mean? Do you ever want to collab with Gordon Ramsay? I mean, yeah, you kind of try. I mean, well, yeah, right? he's duetted two of my videos. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Um, and did he? What, what did he? Did he roast you at all, or was it like? Yeah. So I, ironically, I think it's like his two videos that he didn't. So the first one that he duetted was a restaurant uh, video that I did in one of my dad's restaurants, yeah, yeah. where I don't. When I do videos in my dad's restaurants to all the people out there, I am not cooking at all. Yeah. It's the chef cooking. You <laughs> can see a Latino man's arm. Like sometimes <laughs> there's tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I am fair skinned somewhat, <laughs> and like. I just have them whip it up. Like it takes five minutes to make the video. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, put some olive oil on there because like the guy's <laughs> going hundred miles an hour is his job. But, uh, Gordon duetted one of those videos and like kind of roasted it. Like I think his mic volume was really low Yeah, and like people <laughs> couldn't hear him. So I kind of like got away with it, but, uh, um, <laughs> totally he nice. barely, it was barely a roast. Everyone was like, this was the least roasted he's ever like done to somebody. Yeah. And then he do it. And then he duetted one of my actual cooking videos where he was like, what the fuck is going on? You know, he, said, <laughs> he said like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like literally he was just like, like bitch. And then just like, I, I had like a, I had like a teeth whitening promo. And yeah. Did video, you really? And he was just like, what is he fucking promoting? Like he's just he, he just like was it was very funny. That brand is probably, probably, like, probably the brown's like oh, yeah. Oh, bro. I, I think I, I texted the owner and I, I, the next day and I was just like I I want another, another thousand. Yeah, yeah. Did like you do literally it? because uh, yeah. Okay, good. Because he was just like, is there anything uh, more that I could do for you? I was like, more money. Like yeah, I'm really promoting your brand, but um yeah, like I mean if you if you, you get Gordon Ramsay by, by Gordon Ramsay, but arguably the most. The most like just Famous well known chef, chef right? Right, like, right, right. Like, Bro, I, mean, I, I was in of, Vegas. I'm drunk. I walk yeah, by his Hell's that's Kitchen. Right? Oh, I shit. made the I made a TikTok. No, I'm not even kidding when I tell you that I made this video in a minute and a half. I like a 15 second video, 30 second video. I walked in, but there was little details that that made it really good. Where yeah. I opened the door for like three girls, like they walked out. It was just like spontaneous. Boom, boom, boom. That video had a million views in an hour, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I came to Vegas like scared that I wasn't gonna post any content, and, and that video made up for all of it. And that was the same thing with Faith. Is Faith posted a video of me spitting tequila in her mouth? Yeah. And like that was her only video <laughs> yeah. she made there, and it got like ten mil. Yeah. We both yeah. had a video. It's just funny. Like we're we're dating, and uh, yeah, she we, yeah, she, she announced that on she announced that too. Yeah. So that's what <laughs> I right after she said that I go, "All right, well, we're gonna ask you the same question and see what see what he says as well." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because there's you know. You never know. You never. No, I, luckily sketchy. I'm not an asshole. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna hide the fact that like I'm in love with a girl. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, Hell yeah! Good shit, bro. Good shit. Up. We love that. But yeah. it's just it's funny. We have like, you know that that was something cool that it took me five seconds to make that video. Yeah. And I just like, that's just how much power he holds, and the f- power that like TikTok holds that they thought that I was gonna like that I was beefing with him. You know, I was like, yeah. where the fuck you at, Gordon? Pull up. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you told me to come to Vegas. You did. I just capped for a minute and a half, and everybody was like. Most of the comments were about like, how the fuck are you guys taking this seriously? Calm down. Yeah, chill yeah, out. yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, you guys need to chill. But, um, dude, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely something like a Gordon Ramsay collab would be fucking ridiculous. Gordon yeah. Ramsay boxing match? I had a, he was in my <laughs> Oh, <laughs> imagine knocking out. Oh, okay. actually, and, that's, and, wait, that's Danny, something else we're going to yeah, talk about, Danny too. Wait, yeah, wait, so what's up with that? So the, the Danny Duncan There's thing, so much I, was, stuff. I was on the way back from Charlotte to LA. Oh, wait, no. Uh, I was on the way. Oh, fuck, where was I? I just remember being in the airport. So I guess I was on the back, on the way from uh, Charlotte to LA. And I super randomly saw like Vinny Hacker post about this fight. Yeah. And I saw the little question mark. Who's Danny Duncan going to fight? Immediately, I just posted on my story, posted on my feed, QCP versus Danny Duncan. Like just randomly. It's like there's people that take advantage of that situation. I'm not even the type of person that would like clout chase like that. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't an intention to clout chase. It was like an intention of like, this is possible. Yeah. You actually want to do it. You know, it's possible. And immediately hit up like two girls that I know that know him. And they messaged him and he instantly was like, who the fuck are you talking with this? Who's that? He doesn't watch TikTok. So he's yeah. like, yeah, he's, I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. You know, like, I'm just going to keep 
gonna keep pushing this. So I made a TikTok. It took me like 30 minutes. I made it like pretty decent. That video got a couple million. And I said like, go to his Instagram and and tag him, tag him, tag him. To this day, people are still tagging me in all of his shit. Yeah. And it's like I didn't even know how much power I held in that position, but we have our, our weight class. I've got like 50 pounds on him. Oh my yeah, god. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because like like I've I've like seen Danny. Like we were just like on Hollywood Boulevard. I've seen Danny Duncan. Short. And like you know, I've met him. Yeah, I met I, him at a party. Yeah, I took like, a selfie like, with him. Like yeah. like like you see, and I I'm a huge Danny Duncan. Yeah. I've been yeah, watching. Him fucking, we picked him up from the oh, airport when, before we did YouTube. Yeah. No way. Yeah. He posted on a story. He's coming on a Delta flight, and we drove to the airport and picked him up. That's fucking hilarious. But yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking from him. I was thinking like six one one seventy, right? Yeah. He's more like five ten one. He's you know he's more like five ten one fifty. You know what I mean? And like, uh, what are you, like 200? Yeah, like, well, I've been like about like 195 to 200 for a while. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, that's just complete. I mean, like, but that's I mean, a, in the end of the day, it's it's skill. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, he's true. the type, of, he's like, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. All I, I, I've never gotten into a fight. I was in Catholic schools, K through 12. You know, like, there's no aggression in me at all. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the, to pull aggression out of me, you have to be so wrong. Yeah. Like, you have to be doing something so fucked up to actually get me to like want to fight somebody. Yeah. So someone like him, he can just probably flip a switch and become an yeah, animal. He well, just, he's an animal. He's, he's yeah. with it. Have you ever seen his, his vlog when he was, um, it was, a, I think the Dodgers, the, no, 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 it the was Clippers, the Clippers had just, was it? Lakers, the oh. Lakers won. The Lakers won. He was like at like the Lakers parade, and this guy like was fucking with him. And he like pulled a knife out on him. Holy shit! Oh, yeah. And Danny but, like, pulled a knife on him. Or the no, other guy, no, the other yeah. Guy so, so the other guy pulled a knife on yeah. him. And he was like in a vlog, and Danny Duncan like pulls a knife out too, and he was so with it. Yeah. Like, and it was crazy because like he's like, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Yeah. He's like, and he was like walking him down yeah. and shit. It was crazy, and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's not me. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> for for me, it's like you know, let's say I'm at a bar and somebody like squares up on me for. Taking their girl or some random shit, which is like unprobable. I don't even do that shit. Like I'm a normal, I'm a nice guy. Like I'm not. If you're talking to a girl, I'm not gonna pull up and fucking steal them from you. Yeah. But um, that's the sort of thing where I'm gonna be like, let's solve this problem. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have a funny, I have a funny story too. Quick tangent. My older roommate and I and his friend from home were at um, at like a sway party. This was like last summer. You know, like right when like Bryce Hall got bashed for yeah, yeah, yeah. having the a huge party. Power hours. And and shit. Yeah, it was like his birthday and all this shit. So it was like a little bit before that, but I was at this party and uh, we were leaving and my roommate's friend from home, like it's just a guy from Pittsburgh. You yeah. know what I mean? So he sees Addison Ray pull up in her yeah. G-Wagon and he's like, Addison oh, Ray? Yeah. Holy you know shit. what I mean? Like, damn, because he's the only guy there that's not like in social media and like, yeah. but he didn't have a very, very like crazy reaction to it, but it could have like perceived, she might've felt uncomfortable. So when she walked inside, she told Bryce that she felt uncomfortable and Bryce like came out with Josh and like came up to me and my roommate and, and him and we're just like, who the fuck was like talking shit to Addison? Wait, was he talking shit? Or you just said like no? So like, I, it's just about whatever Addison said to to Bryce, like that she felt uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like he said something, but he I don't think he did. It was just like she kind of felt weird about it. So they came out and pretty much like we're just kind of like, what's up? What's up? Yeah, yeah. And I'm by instinct gonna try to solve the problem before starting ruckus for yeah. no reason. But my roommate. <laughs> doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> He's from Pittsburgh. He's big. He knows he could knock every sway guy out like he could probably take like four of them on yeah because he's an animal. He would he just fights people at parties. <laughs> like yeah, he's yeah. been he's been jumped by groups of guys growing up. Yeah. So there's the difference of me growing up in my situation and him yeah. and He's trying to solve the problem, or I'm trying to solve the problem. He's trying to fucking fight. He's trying to fuck them up. He goes, I don't give a fuck about your numbers. Fuck you guys. Like, I don't. I'm were they trying to flex numbers? <laughs> no, no. Oh, they were just like, they're, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. they're, they're low key big so fans he, of that, though. Of course. Dude, he would get like pressed. He thought that I was like dick sucking because I'm like normal and nice to these yeah. guys. And I'm like, and like, I'm friends with all of them today. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's not because I'm sucking their dick, it's because I'm nice and normal. It's like, he wanted to start a problem. So basically, they. They, uh, he kind of starts like stepping up on him and, um, Bryce and Josh are, are, I'm, I'm like separate. I'm like, fuck off to my room. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Go walk or something. Like get the fuck out of here. And I figured that I've solved the problem. I said, he's from, uh, boys from Pittsburgh, like to his friend that was visiting. And I was like, you know, cut him some slack, blah, blah, blah. I guess he went into Michael Gruen's bathroom. Who was like, he, he went to Michael Gruen's bathroom. That's not the move. He peed in Michael Gruen's bathroom. No. And, um, Michael was obviously really pissed about it too. So then. 
I like resolved the problem. <laughs> me and Josh. Holy me and Josh. Yeah, like, you bro, probably, you, you, you Groove, probably didn't flush. You, you probably, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, left a massive dump in Michael Green's bathroom. My dude smokes backwoods, drinks Henny. He's like probably pissed all over Michael Green's bathroom. So like they were all pissed off about that. And I like solved the problem. I was screaming at my roommate's face. Get the fuck out of here. Stop. He's like, fuck you. You like suck a dick. He started getting mad. And then I pretty much, I fixed the problem. I solved it. You know, Michael Green's like, that's my boy. Like we're all like hugging it out. But that's just QCP. Yeah. Saves the world. <laughs> that kind of gives like a little. Like, Let's go make some pasta. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, so that, and I was also like, just it was just getting to LA. You know, for yeah. me to have an opportunity to even go to this party itself yeah. was great. And like the people that are there, you know, I was trying to become friends with everybody, and um, it ended up like working out for the best. Because like the next day, Josh DM'd me. It's like I don't know. I didn't wasn't tight with anything like that. Like I met them at like playlist, and they yeah. just like knew my videos, and they were we were really cool with each other. But then Josh DM'd me the next day, and was like respect for last night. Like I don't have my phone on me. I could have read it, but like. He said, pretty much just like respect for that. Like it was cool that you didn't just like step out of your, yeah. you know, you and stayed, back you stayed up, yourself yeah. like and, and agreed with the situation. But that just shows the difference between like, I'm, I'm that's just like who I am. It's like, I'm going to try to fucking solve the problem yeah. before I step up and try to fight somebody because I'm a, a muscular. You know what I mean? It's not like that. Yeah. But and most people would have the impression that you could beat the shit out of people. Yeah. Oh, and, you, and, and then yeah. you get into fights all the time. No, that's, like, that's, also, very that's also a like That's why you, you don't know, If get all you know fights. me is like, if all you know from me is like, Scrolling down your for you page, yeah. If that's all you know about me, you're gonna think a lot of things that aren't true. Yeah. You also have to admit, like, if you were to, if you were, if there was somebody talking shit and you start talking to them and just screaming at them in that <laughs> in the accent back. you do in your videos, yeah, like, bro, yeah. like, there has to be some because you know, like, a big part of fighting. I like none of us really get in fight. Berkey's knocked some dude out before. The, the, like, you know, <laughs> we don't we don't really get in fights too much, but like, I feel like if you if I was about to fight someone and they started just fucking screaming at me in some Italian accent, yeah. I'd be like, yo. Maybe no. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you know, people people can be a different animal. It's like, yeah. I could see somebody yeah. who's supposed to be me, or not supposed to be me. I could see that character being very, very intimidating. I would like, I would want to fight yeah. me and my other character, <laughs> which is weird. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that that's 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 funny. But I highly suggest to not base your night around trying to fight people if you have any yeah. problems. Yeah. So 100%. true. Yeah. Um, well, it's all a mentality going into it. Like if you are angry before you get drunk. And then you go get drunk. You're yeah, gonna fucking I mean, fight someone. A lot someone. of the times, it's like like my guy had like shit going on in his life, so exactly, yeah. he's kind of on edge already. And then uh, something like that happens, and he's just ready. But it was kind of culture, like back in Pittsburgh, like all they did was fuck people up. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, like sway is not different. as uh, hard as people from Pittsburgh. Weirdly, I don't know. Just no, like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, like I'm sure Bryce and them. I'm sure they've gotten like into fights, but I'm when I tell you this guy is just it mentally would not he could fuck them up. Yeah. So in like, to this day, I'm like, I've, I've talked about that story with Bryce. I think I, I was with Josh and like Griffin and we talked about it and Michael and it was just kind of funny looking back at the story because they remember it like as clearly as I do. And they were just kind of like, yeah, like he was pretty fucking big. Yeah. Also, like jo Josh is Canadian. He's not gonna do shit. Like it's like, bro, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, like Canadian dude, my Canadian guy, dudes my are, guy was 6'3 with the sleeve when he was 16. Whoa, so yeah. like, oh, he was already, Bill. he was already, he was born a fighter, bro. Holy shit, the fucking rain. Josh Richards fights that guy. That'd be crazy, yeah, like, luckily, bro. you know, that night we almost got into a fight. Like, I wouldn't have like let it really. If I were to do something, he would have done something back. But it was more for me. It's always like, like talk, just game. talk. Yeah. I'll fight with my voice and like really fuck somebody up, like mentally, like <laughs> so psychologically. I'll just you know like like you, getting in his face like like just, mom and well, if they if they <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting in someone's mom not his mom like but to that extent you can tell it's very personal yeah, if you're like vo like verbi like just going where at he's someone, got nothing to say to me like the, anything abusing, he says to, like yeah. anything he says to me i've got something way worse back yeah. and like he would just result to saying something that you it's all about the comeback the comeback no it literally sucker. dude it's so if like you clap back hard they'll be like this is one time this like this this like old lady was like just like chirping for no reason. And I was like, <laughs> it, it, like, I'm gonna like throw hands at the old no, lady. no, 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 no. I, I know, but she was like, she's just being like a dick to me yeah. for no. I can't remember what the situation was, but anyway, I told her I fucked her mom, and then she was like, <laughs> and then no, but an no, old lady. Yeah, I mean, no, she wasn't that old. She was probably like fifty. Yeah. But I told her I fucked her mom, and she was just like, <laughs> yeah, what? But like the thing was, was like obviously I didn't fuck her mom, but she didn't. She doesn't know that. So it was so <laughs> fucking funny, just because it was so quick and it was yeah. so like. And it's like, hey, she was like, just talking shit to me. I was like, hey, I fucked your mom. And then she was like, it's just easy. She just walked away. No, I just walked yeah, away. It's like, yeah, yeah. fuck you. Yeah, yeah I think that's, I think that's a good conversation under. Yeah. Oh yeah, it no, keeps I mean, them so confused. She's like, and, and just my mom. No, you my didn't. mom's like, 
My mom's like mom's eight dead. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> My mom's buried two miles away. All right, real quick, I uh, want to thank our sponsors. We're gonna take a quick break. All right, all right, guys, it's time to pay the bills. Welcome back. So, thank you to Blue Chew. You guys know Blue Chew from uh, woo, woo, woo. when we when Tony took some boner pills on the podcast. I've seen some good ads. You know, people do some good ads for Blue Chew. They do. Yeah. No. So we product. were psyched. We're, we're now we, working. Oh. We can just look at everyone's pants right now. We're all on Blue Chew right yeah, now. We're yeah, we're all up. We're all chubbed up. That's why we got the aprons. Yeah. A little coverage. Yeah, a little coverage. That, well, that's the purpose of wearing it for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, this is awesome. Blue Chew is a great company. We noticed the results right away. Uh, this is basically Blue Chew is a unique uh, online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form, and it's a fraction of the price. Uh, it's literally if you have issues with erectile dysfunction, keeping it up, obviously always feeling ready to go. Blue Chew is the way to go. They deliver it to your door, right? Yeah, and everybody everybody experiences it at some point in their life. I feel, and yeah, like 100%. whether whether like you're whether you're 18 or you're or you're one of our older fans, like you know everybody has these issues. Like you know, Bluetooth will help you figure it out. So guys, if you guys use go the sync, you get the first trial for free. You get Bluetooth for free. You just have to pay five dollars for shipping. Again, that's the sync. All you got to do is go to bluetooth.com and use code the sync to get your first month free and five dollars shipping. But yeah, yeah, let's hop right back in the podcast. Let's do it. Have you ever heard of How to Basic? Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, fuck yeah, with them? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! So he actually made oh, a long time ago. I, yeah, I watched like more of their original videos. Mm. He does something different now. Have you seen the pasta one? I haven't. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of people like a com- I get comments about it. Like, oh, you kind of got like a how-to basic, except I'm not like just throwing shit everywhere. Yeah. Do wait. You want to pull it up, Lou? I want to yeah. show you this. Get your thoughts on this. This is a video. If you guys don't know how-to basic, I'll explain <laughs> it right after. Just watch this. It's high quality. I'm excited. So right there, like what, what kind of pasta are we looking at? That's right. That's fettuccine. Fettuccine. Okay, is that a high quality pasta? Like, what are you noticing there? Um, high quality. You know that it's not homemade. That's, I know that's boxed. It could yeah. be a uh, Dechecco or uh, it's a it's good brand. Okay, it could be Barilla. Yeah, could be and Barilla. It, it looks good. He's making actually a high quality pasta here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it right. seems it seems alright. He, 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 he has a good garnishing with the. Uh, There's a lot of right, right, good beef roll. It's a lot of good beef exactly. roll. I, I think the cinematic is is carrying right now, yeah. but um, yeah, keep it real. You know, I don't pour my sauce onto the pasta. Yeah, you know, I. I, I combine the two. You combine, yeah. I get what you mean. So this is what he water. does, Man, right? With a little bit of pasta water. Oh yeah, yeah. Tears of the tears of the gods. Tears <laughs> of the gods. All right. So this is what he does when he's actually making it. This obviously is a good indicator. Go ahead. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit For audio listeners He's just throwing power Oh bombs. my god He just lit it on fire Well no I mean Well it has to cook Wow Holy shit There we go, there we go. Step there five go. Cook on low heat For ten minutes <laughs> He just lit that shit on yeah. fire <laughs> That was great that was Yeah like Violent yeah, I could do that. I think my first day moving into my apartment with my roommate, we were like, we can throw eggs at the wall. <laughs> yeah. And we threw so many eggs. That's awesome. And it was it's so shitty. It's it was fun, fun, but it was shitty. Because you had to clean it up. And eggs are so hard it's to clean up. So hard to clean up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Dripping. It got behind the fridge. Disgusting. And you can't even, you can't, you can't really like scrub them off. And they smell so Bro, bad. I had like a chalk wall. It was like a black chalk wall. And it's just, to this day, dripped on the wall. <laughs> stains. Damn. Memories, memories. Gross. 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 Never thrown eggs again, apparently. No. Yeah. So what do you what are you seeing as YouTube content? So it's not gonna be like this kind of content, like cooking, right? You don't want you don't you want to branch off through the YouTube first, or, or I never you? really did like full YouTube videos for cooking, but uh, I was just like behind the scenes if it was like a big collab. And um, now I'm gonna only do YouTube video behind the scenes with TikToks if the collab if it's worth it yeah. to do to do it behind the scenes. But I'm gonna do mainly like fitness focused, like yeah. fitness vlogs. So it's gonna be just like less informative and more entertaining just because that's how I work out. I don't do things very specifically. I'm not on a routine. I'm not on a diet. I just go fucking ham when I'm in the gym and it's like, it's going to be me. Fu- it's just me fucking around. I have my first vi- like uh, episode of my new like series. I call it getting bigger than Bradley Martin. Hell <laughs> like, yeah. At the end of my video, I did a little thing with like my thumbnails with Brad. Like the, our, You're like our first guest that like, it looks like you don't skip leg day. Oh uh, yeah. No, I mean, I got like very average size legs because I hurt my knee so I don't like do it too much mm-hmm. but um, I'm starting to do legs again they legs are such a big thing everybody yeah. everybody like small ass dudes will call out big dudes for like skipping yeah, legs yeah, 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 yeah. and it's yeah. like bro you're sm- bro yeah. <laughs> like you're small as fuck you got chicken little legs 
<laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> too much. What do you think? Like the, I think there's a lot of listeners right now listening, being like, "Oh, I want to work out. I always actually right. want to work out." They watch the videos and stuff like that. Is there an actual difference? Yeah, you feel better in life, but do you feel there's a difference in your day to day, the way you interact with with girls, for example? When 100. percent What is that like? What do, I mean, why would you describe that? The beginning of my like life. The only reason why I am where I am is from like confidence. It's like mm-hmm. I, I'm obviously like I'm blessed that I like have like I genetically am a, considered a good looking person. I'm blessed for that, but you don't have to be just a good looking person. Like if you have a good body, that's going to change. I know so many guys in my high school that were like scrawny and then all of a sudden they got jacked and mm-hmm. girls immediately went like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a, bo- a body's important. So it's like that can take, I, I think it's like it can have a bigger difference on um, like your sex life than, than anything else is having is like it, it mentally you're going to you're going to talk True. differently yeah. you're going to speak differently like you're going to have bigger balls mm. because of your confidence that was the reason why I was able to like make the videos that I did I didn't give a fuck like I was just like yeah you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. literally just going crazy and um you know, I, I think that's very, very important for, for things in general, you know, for and life. talking to people, like going up, to, going up to girls, for example, at a party, Confidence. so much easier. Confidence. You know, I'm not wearing, like when I go to parties, I'd never wear like some, some short, uh, like polo or something. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't show off my muscles, um, like talking before social media, because if somebody already knows who I am, yeah. they already know what's under my clothes. But it's like before that, like high school, college, um, it still gives you that it still gives you that, that confidence. You know, yeah. they, some people, you can still tell through people's shirts and shit sure. sometimes, but, um, I think it's so important the mental health, you know, getting your day going. It's like, there's so many different factors, mm. but I also take pre-workout every other day. You know, I don't know where I would be if I didn't. So that's another thing that's very like hard for me to give advice when I am smashing like hundreds of milligrams of caffeine before my workouts. Yeah. And, um, it's a di- when you take certain certain supplements, you are working out on a different level. You just feel like you can you just push further. You can do more reps. Afterwards, you're completely burnt, right. but you're able to push that level because because of because of that push amino acids yeah. stuff like that. I know a lot of people that are able to work out without pre workout. Like I could, it just takes a little longer to get into the flow. Mm. And um, but you know, it's also it's always hard for me to give like direct advice when I have good genetics. And I take pre workout. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure. in a like psychotic gym. You know, it's a literal zoo. It's like, like really, what kind of zoo? Well, it's what huge, it? dude. Well, zoo well, culture. Well, you go to zoo culture. Zoo culture. Okay. Zoo yeah. co- I've been going for like three months. Uh, just that environment. You know, your 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 favorite trap music is blasting above your head. <laughs> yeah. You're you can rip off your shirt. You can fucking scream. You know what I mean? Like at my gym at home, it would be like the dude who's screaming. You're like, this guy is such a weirdo. Yeah. 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 And then now it's like, I'm pu- really pushing and uh, like you're fucking screaming because you, you mean it. Yeah. And like, it's just, a, it's a difference of the situation. I'm able to get, I was able to get where I am in the last few months because of the environment, but still you don't, you know, take advantage of where you like get in your head, you know, put yourself in a different space when you're in the gym, it gets you away from everything. It's like. It's very, I think it's very, very important, and um, it helps get going. The only yeah. reason why I was able to like come here, it's what, 12, 12.30 or yeah, something. Yeah, it's probably. early. I usually do my best work like in the afternoon, but I drank a bang before I got here. Yeah, so yeah. It's the only reason why I was able to like be, you know, with the shifts. And mm-hmm. I actually took Joe Rogan's Alpha Alpha. Uh, How is that Alpha Brain? Alpha Brain. Yeah, is that you think it works? It doesn't have another one. Less stutter, more focus like i don't know i might have i might have lost track of some words if i didn't take it today i don't know that usually when yeah. i get in a flow of talking i'm able to actually like articulate well but um i think it could have it could have helped eliminates the ums eliminates yeah as many fillers one thing that oh, yeah. like that i've noticed specifically is when i used to talk i used to say like yeah like a lot that is dude, the, right? the worst part about that is when you don't you're talking to somebody and you don't realize it. Yeah. The second that you hear one of those likes, oh, you catch and then it. you catch it, Every. and then you catch it, and then you just kind of get then you lost. Just, and then, you start into a loop. and then you have no idea what the fuck they're saying. And I only say like or um when I'm in a situation where I can't talk myself out of it. Right. Yeah. And I'm right. like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, I can't. I can't get out of this. But after being on the podcast for what? What are we at? Six. Sixty episodes. Sixty yeah, first. We're, we're, crazy. This is our sixty first episode. You talk for an hour at a time, and it's on camera, and you listen to yourself do it again. You aren't saying like or um, yeah. right? You know what I mean, like right. you a lot you, less you, at least. Yeah. You eliminate those tendencies that are maybe not like articulating your best self, and it's like it's such a great way to to, yeah. to, like, to yeah. talk. That's to the, work the worst in general is is in conversation, and you naturally start feeling you know like um, and you're like. You're like, this is your fault to the person you're talking to. Like, I don't know what you're doing to me to make me like talk so uncomfortably. Yeah. yeah. Like it, that's a very problematic thing is like when you're in a conversation and it's not smooth, then it's like, it's usually a two way thing. So it's like that person could 
make you feel uncomfortable with like the slightest thing, the slightest Weird. difference can throw off the whole conversation and like mm. it's not an make you want to talk it's to somebody egg. again. <laughs> Yeah, but it, like, it shouldn't make you uncomfortable though. That's the yeah, thing. No, right, it should, right, no, it shouldn't right. at all. Yeah, no, like, I mean you like, power through. But I feel this way, and then you start. <laughs> it's, like it's, ham- like, it's like a like, hamster. It's like a hamster ball. Yeah, yeah. You start going around in a circle, and then it's like, yo, I need to. I want to listen because like, you care about what the person's saying. Yeah. yeah. You just necessarily then you start just like listening like the wrong things and shit. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Damn. So speaking of advice, we have something that's huge. We love doing this. It's a good segment called the Sync Helps. Yeah. Our fans send us their personal issues, what they need I, solved. I, throw it at me. Yeah. I, I feel like I've gone through a lot of things in my life to be able to give advice on almost every subject. Let's do it. We got two good ones these great. are fucking great if you want to email us your suggestions email us at the sync podcast one at gmo.com the sync podcast one make sure to let us know your age uh give us some detail about who you are and it helps us picture who we're talking about but first one okay hey i'm aiden and i'm 16 i live in ohio and i feel like i'm wasting away i've fallen behind in school because i got lazy and i could be graduating a year early but instead of trying to catch up with my classes i waste my time on video games and riding my bike with friends what should i do Got he you. feels down. In his well, case. if you can already graduate early, like you're already ahead. Yeah, right? you're definitely ahead of the game. Yeah. You know, I think that when, you, when your parents and yourself, you get put into that situation where you are already ahead, that's great to begin with. But then the second you stray away, it's just like your, your standard of where you are. Yeah. You know? So he's already ahead and then gets thrown a little back. And, you know, people, your parents can tell you things that make you feel shittier that you're, that you're losing. And at the end of the day, you know, you... you you're still a kid. You're still you're 16 years old. Um, there's people. Our generation sets a standard, yeah. which which is making 16 year olds and and around that age group make you feel like you're really behind and you're not at all. And it's sad that there are 16 year olds that are super fucking famous. It's like setting a standard for yeah. people in general. Not everybody's gonna do social media. I hope to God not everybody does social media and you can we do have it for a fun. fucked up world. We are yeah. in a fucked up world because most people can't. Most people can't handle it. Mm-hmm. Not people, at all. People don't realize it. People don't realize it, and it literally will chew you up and spit you out, and you don't even know that it happened. Yeah. But for for uh, what was his name? Uh, his name Aiden. 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 For for you, Aiden. I think you know you need to just just go with the flow of what you're doing and not and not to get not get overwhelmed with it still play your video games get your homework done mm. before you do anything extra and until you're at the point you know when when you get to college you'll be able to make sure you're passionate about what you do find what you love start now you're 16 a lot of people try to start when they're 25 30 to find what they love and they ignore reality you want to be happy with your life and find what you love and learn it and start now start you know the internet is a great place to learn things you can get ahead of everybody else when you get to college so just just don't don't stress too much, mm. you know. Have have your fun, but get your work done. Yeah, because I would I would love to go back and ride fucking oh my bikes, God, bro. Yeah. Of course, dude, the shit I would do to go ride a bike over to my friend's house right now, like, dude, that Crazy. the craziest. I saw I saw a childhood picture of me with my longboards. All of us, seven, seven of us with our longboards, when I was in <laughs> sixth grade yesterday. Some guy that so I grew up with raw. DM'd me said, was so confused when you came up on my for you page. He's yeah, like, yeah, I don't know who I didn't. He's like, check out this picture. And it was like one of our like YouTube thumbnails from when we were fucking so sixth, epic. sixth grade. Awesome. All of us holding our longboards. Yeah. Dude, we dude, used to rent longboards. Dude, we, used to, dude, we, we did like 500 miles in the summer. I swear fucking to God, it was yeah. it was insane. Like we were all our legs were all shredded and shit. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was so nuts. Yeah. We, but yeah, I mean, to Aiden, like your high school is not gonna let you fail high school. Like if you talk to your counselor and you're and you're involved with your teachers and stuff, they aren't gonna let you fail high school. The shit I would do to go back and hang out with like, or just to be in high school and like and like experience that again. You got like it, you grow up so fast. You'll look back on where you are and yeah. you'll you'll realize how blessed in the position you are and you you know as of now I just just make sure like, to Like if you could be 16 pushing. again, what would you do differently? I would stop giving a shit about my environment because mm-hmm. it's like Exactly. So here there's there's a little balance there's, there's two factors when it comes to okay. not giving a shit in high school. You're not going to give a shit and then people are going to look at you like who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah. But then if you just ignore that and you keep pushing through, you're going to come out way, way better than everybody else. Because like, well, I mean, people are going to start learning the things that you learned in high school and college. You are going to be ahead mentally, which will come back to your academics. So it's like not stressing too much about everything, not letting, you know, if your friend, if somebody wants to hang out so bad, don't adjust your life to somebody else's focus on what you need to get done, get it done. And it doesn't matter if people er like irk you about things, just keep your tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I was shit at school, but I just, 
my my I was not shit, but I, I was like it wasn't my priority, so I put Me my too. energy into something else. Me too. Right? You, you, Absolutely. But there are people definitely that don't put their energy in school and their energy doesn't go anywhere else. And that right, yeah. that's a problem. That's a different type. Yep. That, that's yep, what you're yep, saying yep, with yep. the balance. I I think that um this is kind of kind of a tangent, but what I did was I always stayed in my situation and worked yeah. on something else until that something else override where I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was in college and I was kind of just like I don't know if I can move on to year two and continue doing something when I don't have a motive. I'm like, I don't want to do business administration and marketing for the rest of my, I'm like, if I do anything, I want to work for my dad. I luckily have the situation to be able to do that. But I looked at that as, all right, I'm going to take community college classes while working for my dad while trying something else. This is before TikTok. Yeah. And then luckily, you know, TikTok was doing so well that I had no time to be doing my community college classes, but it had potential for something else. And I had a fallback. Yeah. So it's like always stick with your situation until the thing you want to do, if it's outside of school, just overrides it. But for Aiden's specific situation, just grind where you are, find your passion, grind, grind, grind. And you'll look back and you know, I wish I cared a little more. No, well, no, for my situation, luckily I'm not, what I want to do with my life has nothing to do with school, but I hate when this is my, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say like fuck college. Yeah, yeah. I know. Fuck college. Like <sighs> I make I'm a TikToker. Like fuck no, no, dude. Like people everybody can't do this. Like humans are not this True. all the same. And 2 years ago that kind of made sense when everyone cuz everyone was saying like you got to go to college and you don't have to, but the opposite it's just isn't true when you say when you just say fuck yeah. college, that doesn't work either. When no, you say like yeah. Fuck, like fucking nine to five too. For so right. many people, nine to five is perfect. You can well, go to college and learn about something to do, like open up your own business. I mean, uh, st- um, like fortunately, the uh, like the internet holds every university. You know, you can learn everything you can yeah. from the books online. Yeah. But it's still obviously structured. Yeah. It's better to be in school. And yeah, like all, all of us like went to college and then like we saw that this was like taking off, so we like took the advantage of doing this. Like, right, right. Yeah. You can always come back yeah, to school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you know, that's another and thing. And like you aren't forget. gonna buy a, you aren't gonna buy a car before you test drive it. So like if you try different things and you and you and you fight figure out what you want. Yeah. Yeah. It. It's Go just it. sadly there's a stigma in America of and every country that you have to do things a certain way and sometimes you're gonna get criticism for not. And yeah. you have to ignore that and you have to fight through. And if you really keep on failing, then look for something else. But yeah. keep on trying. You know? yeah. 100%. 100%. Let's do another one real quick. This one says, please do not say my name. Yo, I'm 16, about to leave school in summer. I have a place in a college guaranteed. So that's why I can leave early. I'm in Scotland, by the way. Wow. Right now, I'm working uh, my ass off to buy a camera and laptop, enough money to pay for a four-month trip to LA when I can get a flight and cheap hotel and stuff. Ooh. By myself, and I don't know what to do, uh, and to meet people in LA, and I don't know what to do and tell my parents that I want to drop everything and move to LA and spend a shit ton of cash on trying to make things happen. For context, I want to do videos that combine David Dobrik, Alex Warren, Sidemen, and Mr. Beast, and put that on steroids. Sheesh! That is going to require a lot of commitment, my guy. A lot of commitment. A lot of commitment. And those are some big names. Those are, yeah. yeah. My advice would be to plan that out for two years. Really practice what you're doing because if you come to LA when you're 16, you aren't going to be able to really do anything. Especially like alone. If you're coming yeah. out with a squad of, of like savages, yeah, yeah, you that's might different. be able to do it. You know, you, you got to at least try to meet people online. You can't even rent a hotel until you're 21. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you no, can't even stay in a hotel by yourself. Yeah, and we aren't, and we aren't trying to shit on your gym. No. I mean, we're trying to figure out how we can, how we can help you out and planning the most effective He's got to get the connections first. Yeah. Right. Were you, right. When you did TikTok, for example, I think there's a way to think about it. His, his plan is move to LA first, then have, have that all happen at the same time. You don't think about going to LA. You think about just the LA content. LA literally came to me. So it's like I had my numbers and I had a management. They sucked, but it's like they <laughs> got me to LA because I had an opportunity to live in a house with a bunch of guys for 750 bucks. Right. So, or whatever. And I was like, I can afford this. It's I'm in LA. Uh, I need to get there and, and meet people first. Yeah. So I was in the situation to do it. I did not say I want to move to LA. You know, it kind of like drew me. Yeah. So that's why I'm there. But it's all possible. Just got to know as many people as you can before you come out. Because what he's describing, you good? <laughs> dying over there. I just pounded that entire thing. <laughs> okay. Well, for that kid, like it, it's a situation where what he's describing is where everyone obviously wants to get at. They want right. to be making millions of right. new videos every single day well, and live the, their life in yeah, LA. Yeah, there was like a poll or whatnot. It said like oh, yeah. YouTubers, TikTokers, or, or well, social media influencers, and like lawyers, doctors, fucking remember, athlete or whatnot. Like, do you remember when we were in high school and then those lists that came out? It was like, what's your dream job? And everyone right. was like, athlete, lawyer. Right, right. There was no such thing as influencer. Now, now it's, it's YouTuber, vlogger. It's like, right. it's like 54% or something. Right, it makes Ridiculous. sense. I mean, like, dude, you're, you're doing stupid shit and making yeah. stupid money. 
Yeah. Sure, sure. So I get it. I understand. It's just something that you really, really, really need to ease into. Start where you are or have and a work, huge... work your way out of where you are until you have no choice but to move on. Yeah. When you've established something for yourself, that's when you come to LA. Yeah. You want to go to LA when you literally don't have a choice. There, of course, there will be stories. There will be people that came to LA and, and did it True. and figured it out, but that's not always the case. Yeah. yeah. You know, and very, very LA rare. necessarily, it, like, it isn't necessarily the greatest place for growth. Right. Not because oh. yeah, but it's such a fucking fight of think about like how many actors there are that you've never heard of once in your entire life, right? Because there's just so much battle, there's so but, much but but actor, actor, how many actors four million people here? Yeah, there's yeah. a fuck ton of amount of yeah, people here. People. But dude, you can't be somewhere else though. Like Atlanta's the second closest, for example, in terms of right, like New media. York. New York, yeah, but New right. York's even harder. There's more people. Exactly. It's here it's different because the industry's here, the connections are here. You talk about making those connections. That's why LA's so crucial. It is. It, it, but especially with a foundation. Yeah. yeah. LA is crucial, but it sucks. There are parts of it that definitely suck. Yeah. But yeah. No, I keep trying to tell Faith. I'm like, Faith, you have to understand that you've been here for a few months mm -hmm. and you came here. She, you came by yourself. You did a lot of, you did things that people don't do, sacrifice like wise. And it's going to take a little bit of time. It took me months to start making money. And now every month is exponential, but it took a long time to get there. Yeah. I can go to any party now and know people and feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm able to make more connections is because I'm comfortable where I am. I'm like, you can't just get there when you first yeah. get here. Shit takes time. That's another life lesson is shit takes time. Yeah. I feel like we're, we're halfway to that point that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're getting to there. You're, you're yeah. so getting there. A hundred percent. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are, you're building a name that's going to take the fuck off. Because once you get notable people, then notable, you know, yeah. I'm gonna tell my friends who have mm -hmm. a big following that you they should be on here. I'm gonna recommend people. It's like it's just a growth. It's a build. It's yeah. building progress. It's cool. 100%. This place is gonna look a lot different in two years for all of oh, us. Yeah. Holy shit! Oh, yeah. oh, and we're also moving again in a fucking week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's something. Fuck you, Joanne. <laughs> Joanne, suck my dick. <laughs> Fuck you. Seriously. I'm gonna shove pasta down your throat, Joanne. <laughs> God. Yeah. She uh, honestly would take it. Like yeah, she, she would. She, she was trying to fuck oh one. Of, God. She was trying to fuck one of our editors. Come on. Come on. She's also seventy. Yeah. No, she's she's kind of bad. She's gone bad. All right. So what, what's coming up next? Like, what can work, what can fans expect? You have, oh, uh, I have something really cool. I'm filming a masterclass in like a week with really? like producers from like Shark Tank and like all these oh, huge damn. name. I'm going to going over to the um, director like producer's house in a few days. Like just to talk about everything, but, um, what's it on? I, this is, uh, I think it's, I don't know. I honestly don't know, but they're going to take the, they're going to take the concept and like use it as a pitch, like after we get it all established, but it's going to be a full set and a huge mansion. Like the whole concept is it's me cooking and I'm going to be, I'm going to be filming a TikTok of me cooking in this mansion, but I'm going to be in the accent while I'm filming the video. It's going to be like my normal thing, yeah. except in between I'm talking to the set and talking about life advice. So it's going to be like very, very structured to give people like confident, like to give people life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like the cooking is not really the A factor in the video. I'm trying to show the fact that cooking is simple. And then on top of that, it's going to be, it's just, it's just a whole bunch of things at, at one time. That's going to give you just more confidence about yourself. Yeah. Uh, confidence to cook. But the, you know, the, like I said, like my, my main shit in life is not cooking. It's not comedy. So that's why I'm looking at it as a secondary in the middle of this video where it's mm -hmm. like, I'm cooking and making my TikTok, but I'm showing that that's just like the secondary of the video. So it like, seems like it's a masterclass, but it's really going to be on these situations for our new yeah. generation yeah. where that's perfect awesome. example of, of, you know, yeah. Aiden, me telling kids. how I got to where I was and yeah. the sacrifices I had to make. Um, I sacrificed my friends. I had no friends. I didn't care because I was growing something on my own. I started making money and it's the same thing today. There's not a single person in my high school that's doing what I do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm making more money right now than a lot than 90%, like 90% of the people in my high school will after college. Yeah. So it's like, people need to hear how you got there and like it with, it's going to be really, really well structured and it's going to be it's know, awesome. I'm excited to see how it, how it goes through. But sick as hell. You know, All right. Go check fun. it out. All the Q's links are being linked down below. Make sure to subscribe. Hit up your smile. Listen to us on Spotify at the sync podcast. If you don't, the podcast. I'm going to show pasta down your throat. Down your throat. Yes. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out guys. Peace. Peace. Whoa. Whoa.